Greetings, hello, welcome everyone, welcome to Dev Chatter. Uh, we are just getting started here. Uh, sorry about the uh, few minutes of delay in the beginning of our streams, that's pretty normal here. Uh, I like to put up a little bit of an intro so I can get the stream going and, and do the last couple of setup things, uh, make a couple of announcements, and uh, generally get things going. Uh, so for anyone who is new here, welcome. My name is Brendan. This channel here is Dev Chatter. Uh, I know we're just... Uh, this is a Thursday. We start a little bit early on Thursdays, so uh, if you are someone that wants to join us on a regular basis, you can find our schedule down below in the panels. Uh, but generally speaking, we stream four times a week here on Dev Chatter on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at uh, 2 p.m., 2 p.m., 12 p.m., and 1 p.m., uh, and that is Eastern Time. Uh, so for this part of the year, that's going to be like, what, 1800, 1800, 1600, and 1700 UTC, respectively, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. But again, you can find that information down below so you don't have to do the calculations yourself. Uh, time zones and uh, time in general is a challenge, which brings us to uh, talking about the project that we are doing here on the stream. We want to make it easier for... Uh, anyone that views live coding streams or the hosts of live coding streams to be able to uh, connect to each other, to be able to find when when the other one is is uh, streaming, or when, you know, to be able to optimize for the audience availability. For example, uh, I will point out that uh, there are different times during the week when uh, I am streaming. So obviously, if you are a C sharp uh, streamer and you want to schedule something, you might want to look on there and find out when my streams are or when any other C-Sharp streamers are in order to try to avoid. Um, not that you need to, because obviously you can have more than one stream going on at the same time and that's fine, uh, but it does make it just a little bit easier. Okay, so if you're new here, welcome. Uh, Couple of things I want to get out of the way. First off, I don't. I must not have started my bot. <laughs> I hit the button and I was like, "Oh, the bot didn't actually do anything." Yep, didn't even start it. We'll go ahead and let him get in here. Hey, Rex, welcome. All right, that should be the bot. There we go. So now I can actually have it post links. Uh, hey, Justin, uh, we are about to take a look at your pull request that's in here. Uh, so the first thing that I want to mention is uh, our Discord. So we do have a Discord. It's fairly active. Uh, we've got a good group of people over there. So if you want to chat with me or any of the other viewers here on the stream about any programming and tech stuff, that is a fantastic place to do it. And if you are interested in taking a look at any of our projects, any of our source code contributing, sending us pull requests, or just generally reviewing it because you want to take a look at what we did, what we did, how we did something, anything like that, our code is all open source. It's at github.com slash devchatter. You can find a link in the chat as well as down below. Uh, and generally speaking, it'll get you roughly to this page that I'm on right here. Uh, that'll actually take you here and then open up DevStreams project and you can look at the project we're working on today. Uh, I already gave a pretty brief intro of um, the project we're working on. If you missed it, it's over here in that little spot next to me. Uh... Let's see, who else said hi? Uh, the Sniper, you're new. Uh, you've, uh, oh, awesome. Well, welcome. Uh, this is a programming stream. We do live coding stuff, so uh, we'll be in Visual Studio and VS Code for most of the time that we are uh, working today. We're doing a little bit of de web development today. Uh, we're going to start off by reviewing a pull request from one of our viewers. We're going to take a look. Uh, I believe that uh, what this is, and Justin, correct me if I'm wrong, um, this uh, is just a scaffolded out uh, piece of, identi of the identity framework that is able to be included automatically from ASP.NET Core using the tooling. And it will add these in automatically, and because we've got them, it will use these ones instead of the ones that came by default. That's basically the idea. Uh, Coded Beard, welcome, greetings, good afternoon. And uh, to anybody else, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good night, whatever time it is for you, hopefully it's good. Um, Oh, the sniper. Oh, awesome. Uh, you're learning how to code. That's great. All right. Feel, feel free to ask questions if you're ever wondering what's going on. Uh, if, if I don't get to the answers, someone else in chat, there's a good chance will. Because uh, we usually have a good number of... 
professional software developers here in the chat. Uh, I'm expecting a pretty low group today because I didn't get started before the uh, Visual Studio stream started. Okay, so this is the pull request that we received. So it has a change password, CSHTML. This looks like the standard one. It doesn't look like anything's changed. Justin, is, that's the standard one, right? No, no modifications to that. Doesn't look like there are. Uh, a change password model. It has a user manager, a sign-in manager, and a logger to log out information. Password new password must be at least uh, minimum length long and at max a hundred. Let's uh, yeah, we'll we'll make sure it works in a minute. But um, change passwords external logger, personal data, two-factor authentication. Okay, so this is just the uh, the nav pages okay uh, Kasukin <laughs> I appreciate it thank you uh, yep the scaffolded standard identity pages it looked like it um, sign in manager identity manager has external logins um, I don't think we have any so it shouldn't f uh, I don't think we enabled those Pretty sure we don't. I know we looked at enabling one, but we haven't uh, yet. But we will be adding them in uh, because there is plan to allow you to log in through YouTube or through your Twitch account uh, because you can tie those in. So we really do want to do that uh, sometime soon, actually. So here's the registration page, which I wonder if it's going to have those same restrictions. So we should we should check that. Try on both the login and that. Oh, here's the model for it. So, again, 108. The only thing I don't like about this is that it's it's pulling this from these strings, which I know that's the way it's set up, but it's just kind of annoying that it does that, because then if we change the rule somewhere, it doesn't actually change in both of those places. So I'm surprised that uh, Microsoft team hasn't found a nice solution for that, and then it's using jQuery validate in order to put in the validation messages for when they fail, because that's the way that uh, ASP.NET Core does it. All right, let's take a look. Let's see how it works. So I'm going to pull GitHub Desktop, and I'm going to toss it on the screen so you can all see it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab a pull request, which is going to be this one right here. And once it pulls in those changes, now my local copy has all the changes from Justin, so we can go ahead and take a look at this right here and when we run this site we should be able to try the registration and login pages and get those messages that we expect to be getting and uh, sniper I will apologize in advance I'm gonna do a lot of keyboard shortcuts so, generally the code process and that kind of thing uh, should help though but yeah I, I press a lot of keyboard shortcuts uh, let's see so I am not logged in so I want to log in and actually let's register first so let's take a look at these messages so first off um, you know what I'm gonna do this in an incognito page so that none of these form controls remember anything. Um, foo at bar.com and let's leave it blank and see what it says. Password field is required. All right, I'm gonna put that in. Okay, so it says the password must be at least eight and at max uh, 100 characters long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's awesome. <laughs> we had no restrictions on that, apparently. Uh, you've been watching and following a lot of tutorials on Pluralsight, so you have ideas on how things work. Oh, Sniper, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. huh. If you want to learn a little bit about Git and GitHub, I know a guy that did a course on that there. And by know a guy, I mean I did one uh, a bunch of years ago. So it doesn't match exactly, but the concepts still apply kind of funny okay so yeah that that seemed to work let's try to log in and see what happens foo at bar.com 
first off, let's actually try logging in. Okay, so it does work, so I remembered everything. Foo at bar.com. Does it do anything when I invalid login attempt? Nice. Let's go to the change password page. Profile page. Ooh, I can set my phone number. I wonder if that works. Five 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 five. Um, there we go. Hey, hey, it apparently saved it. Current password, new password. Oh, yep, see, it's yelling at me. Awesome. There we go. Uh... <laughs> You'll never guess the new password. I'll give you a hint. It's password. I love that it didn't restrict that. Uh, so the funny thing being, um, from a site's perspective, you kind of, I mean, you want people to use secure passwords so that they can get into your, so that they can, you know, keep their stuff so that random people don't just get in and, and muck with things. Uh, but if your site really doesn't matter, one of the things that bugs me is when they get like super restrict restrictive about like, it's got to have this and this and this and this other thing and they can't have this. Such to the point where even when I'm like using a password manager and it's automatically generating a password, like somehow I still violated some rule in their password that exists for some reason. And it's like, trust me, my, pa like, my password's secure, it's randomly generated, it's 20 characters long, it's like, you know, it's fine. But no, they've got some specific rule. Uh, Suba Dupa, hey, greetings. Uh, I am doing well. Uh, I hope you are doing well also. Super Dupa. All right, so that seems to work. Um, the question is whether it's using our existing rules or not. Because it just allowed... Oh, yeah, no, I require nothing. Good, cool, go me. Um, length has to be eight. We're required unique characters is one. You can, you can repeat the same character eight times. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so we, we basically just said, hey, yeah, you can be as lax as you want with your password. Uh, the idea being that hopefully our users know to use whatever type they want because if someone wants to use a password that's really long and is you know just letters that's fine you made it long made it secure you want to use a password that's got a whole bunch of symbols and numbers and upper and lowercase letters cool that's fine with us too i'm not worried about it and we set it at a hundred character limit so i'm okay with that as well so i think that i'm going to approve this change and go ahead and uh let this on in so Uh, let's see, uh, Super Duba, uh, you've been the last two weeks without seeing any of your streams for the exams of the university. Oh, uh, Super Duba, that timing was great then, because I actually missed a bunch of streams. Um, I, I did not stream my streams, so yeah. That was a great time to get caught up in exams and miss, a, uh, miss some streams. Uh, hopefully your exams went well, uh, hopefully you studied for them and, uh, you know, performed well on the actual day of the exam. Okay, so we are back on the dev branch. It is all updated, and I want to take a look at our calendar page. So let's go to calendar... Is it calendar? CSHTML? Yeah, it is. There it is. Uh, calendar, CSHTML.CS, and calendar... StreamCalendar.js. So these are the relevant files uh, that we're working on. We have uh, 
the JavaScript file that is uh, using Vue.js and is the back end of this page. We have the server side back end of the page and then we have the front end of the page and this is where all of the UI elements are. For this part, I want to take a look at a couple of things on this. Actually, you know what, since we're doing a couple of like UI updates, I there's one other one I want to get while we're doing this. Uh, let's jump over to details.cshtml on the channels page. Because we have this right here where we display the live status. I kind of want to do something with that. Uh, and what I'm thinking about doing is... Um, um, hang on, I'm, I'm thinking about making my brain work. Um, um, I want to make a little live box around it. Um, I want to just write the word live and put a little box around it, a little rounded corner box, and I think that's going to work. So... Uh, instead of saying, yeah, so we're going to display this span if it if the channel's live, and then inside of here, we're going to, um, instead of live status, um, I'm just going to write the word live, and we need to make this span have some styles based on that. So let's say class, and what is this? Um... This is like a live badge or something. Site CSS, we're going to open this up and view channel styling. Channel image, yeah, this is exactly what it goes right in the view channel styling. All right, so let's ask the internet what we should do for that. We're going to use Dev Chatter Red. Um, live, uh, oops, um, HTML. Um, that's hilarious. Uh, yeah, badges. We might actually use their badge now that I think about it. Uh, so we could say badge um, on it as well. So let's load the site. Where did I leave this? I have the site open, don't I? No? We're opening the site again. Math. Oh, math is fun. Uh, High-level math is less fun sometimes, but math, generally speaking, is fun. Alright, so we go to all channels. Uh, if we go to the dev chatter page, haha, -ha, there's our little live badge. So we need to change the color, of, we need to change the background what color. Uh, the Michael Jolly, uh, your five month resub. That is awesome. Oh man, we, we are one month away from, uh, from getting you fully out of that egg. Uh, that, that is going to be awesome. Uh, so that color right there, uh, I kind of almost feel like I want, so first off, I need this to, to space over a little bit and here's how we're going to get this styling. So we don't necessarily actually want to use the badge, but that just gives us an idea, like the the badge out of Bootstrap can give us the basic concept we're looking for. Uh, so first off, I'm thinking that padding, we might want to oops, increase this padding a little bit. And... I kind of feel like we want a margin on this. Actually, let's do this up here. Uh, actually, I'm just going to do it this way. Margin left. Um, and we said padding. We wanted to do... Um, 
Yeah, three pixels of padding I actually think is pretty good. And then uh, 12 pixels on the sides. That's not bad. I want to adjust the radius a little bit. That's a bit too much. So let's go with uh, border radius is uh, well we'll start it at 10 pixels and then we'll just do a little bit of a uh, we'll do a little bit of up and down arrow adjustment till we get to one that we like whoops wrong way uh, that's not bad so if you're watching this so if you're watching that little live button right there you notice as I hit the arrow keys it just adjusts the radius until you find the one you like I like four I think that looks good that looks like a button you can tell there's rounded corners that looks not bad. Uh, I actually, now seeing the rounded corners adjusted, I feel like I want to shrink that a little bit too. So the padding is a little bit tighter in there. Uh, the color on the text is actually good-ish. I'm not sure I want to go straight white. Uh, I'm thinking a really, really light gray. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go check out the Dev Chatter logo that's designed to be on dark and see what gray I'm using for that. So I'm going to go steal that really fast off the screen. Um, two, 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 two. Yeah, what color is that? Okay. Um, Google, help me out. Oh, okay. I didn't. I apparently didn't get to the Google one. Convert that to hex, please. There we go. Whoops. Okay. So that is not quite white. And... Background color. I want Dev Chatter Red. Which is going to be... Where is that color? More... Uh... Okay. Dev Chatter Red is 218, 33, and 40. Vertex. There we go. There's Dev Chatter Red. Which again, yes, I know we said last time I need to save these somewhere as something so that uh, I don't have to look them up like that. And there we go. Now that looks like a live button. So I'd say that looks pretty good. So first off, I'm going to grab these values, and we're going to toss these into uh, Visual Studio. Uh, upgrading Dave! Hey, welcome! Greetings! Alright, so... where did I leave? Right there. Um, border radius is not compatible with IE8. Good! Good. Well, we'll ask all those IE8 people to switch over. Alright, um, what happens... Well, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, so we're going to want a font size on that. Um... Ooh, I do like the idea of bolding it. So we're going to bold it. Line height 1, is that doing anything? Oh my god, that is the tiniest little thing. What happens if we remove those? It gets a little bit bigger. All right. What? Yeah, line height. You know what? Here we go. Display <sighs> block. Yep, not gonna do that. Um, I have my own padding. Uh, I have my own font size already. Uh, although, actually, I should put the font size there with that. Put the display block there. Uh, yeah, exactly. We're not supporting IE8. We, we're not. We're not doing it. <laughs> uh, Links lumps. Hey, welcome. Greetings. No, no, no. We're not. We're not doing that. Um, and I will force text align center because. Well, actually, now that I think about it, it really shouldn't be needed. I don't think there's any case where that's actually going to come up. Because this this badge is so small, it doesn't even matter. 
because this is just a little, this is really intended for the live badge. Uh, so when we're going to show this. So I think that set will do it. Uh, cool. Let's go remove the word badge from this. Um, that CSS class does exist. It just hasn't been uh, minified yet. And I think that's why it's freaking out. Yeah, see, we just have to bundle it. And then I think that's eventually going to figure out that it's there. Maybe when it refreshes. I don't know. We'll find out in a second. Let's reload the page and see what that little button looks like. Uh, wait, what? 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 I'm live? What do you mean? Do you think I'm not live? Uh oh. Do you think I'm not live? Why does it think I'm not live? I'm live. Uh. What? Stream definitely live. Okay, view, you seriously think this this isn't live? Live status, false. True. No? Oh, uh, that's failing? Maybe? The call's failing. Okay. Weird. Uh, Link's Lumps. Uh, do we want to show the mo the uh, show the mode for time streamed? If you know what I mean by mode. Uh, Link's Lumps. I don't know what you mean by mode. Uh, we definitely show the, so on the home page when we display who's live, we we were showing how long they'd been live. I think that call's failing here too, isn't it? Is live. Oh, there it is. Okay. So now it's saying that it is live, and uh, for how long? Uh, I need to make that a link so we can go to the page. Now we're here. Oh! Oh, uh, it says live now. Okay, cool. So that's here, but live, but the badge isn't show, but live badge isn't showing up. Did I did I totally derp this? Did I not make it a class or something? Did I did I miss the dot at the beginning or something? I missed the dot at the beginning. Son of a. At least that can do it. There we go. Hey, it works now. Uh, so I'm guessing the site maybe wasn't running before. Um. I notice another problem that I want to mess with. Let, let's add the word badge. Yeah, it centered it. Um, what did badge add that did that? It was vertical align middle. I need to vertical align middle. Okay. At least I know what I missed. There we go. So now it has it without a badge. It's got vertical align middle. That looks good. Uh, I might add two more pixels to that. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So we're going to add two more pixels to that. And there is our live badge that now shows up there. So you can absolutely tell, hey, dev chatter is live. Uh, now, the question is whether or not I should make that live button a link. I'm thinking yes. Um... So let's see what happens if I just put a link in there. So I'm going to do this here because I can, I'll can immediately be able to see if we totally borked the uh, styling when we do this. Because it might freak out. Oh, it did not treat those as tags. It put that in as the actual HTML. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'll edit the HTML. Uh, a and a slash a and we'll do an href equals and that's that's where it's gonna go is right there so that should have left it as a haha it messed up the colors 
See, I figured putting that in there was probably going to mess up the colors because anchor tag itself, so the style in, in, our, in our CSS for anchor tag has borked this. Which means we need to apply the color to an A inside of this. Uh, so let's do that. So text and color and all that thing needs to apply to this. Um, so we're going to say... I can remember how to do this. Um, I think you specify that that's going to apply to the A. We need to remove border radius, we need to remove padding, margin, background color. Uh, we can remove the display, line height, vertical line. Those I think can all survive this. And we might need to text decoration none on that also. So this is gonna go back to normal and I'm going to reapply I'm gonna reapply the um, the anchor tag, but I'm actually gonna put it in here. So we're gonna say live and let's do this just for space. Um, yep, there we go. href is going to be um, Uh, actually, no, I don't need to href it. I can uh, do it this way. Model.channel.uri. It's like that. So we can bind that on the server, send the HTML down this way, and then just display based on the JavaScript that way. Which is nicer when you can... Uh, whoops. You on Twitch was, an act, was is also a button. That's funny, and it extends all the way out to there. I should fix that. I, clicking here should not should not be a link. Uh, big fan of Dapper and Vue.js. Uh, Timus, uh, or Timus, one of the others. Welcome. Uh, do you have the repo up in the public? Yes. Mike, thank you, Link Slumps. Yep, yep, yep. We are using we are using Dapper and Vue.js in this project. Uh, though in our other projects we usually use Entity Framework Core. Okay, so that's a link. The styling looks okay. Do I want the hover to give us that effect? Let's add the hover and see. So just the regular A hover underline is what's what's doing that right now. So we could remove that. Um, uh, Okay, so let's do this. Um, let's head over to the CSS for a second and we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this and say for hover, since we need to override it because everybody else is gonna do it, um, what was, this, what was the style it's applying? Uh, it is doing text decoration underline, so... I wonder if I can get away with just adding this on the base one, and I wonder if it'll override that. Uh, let's find out. Yeah, okay, so just putting it there overrode it, so we don't need this one. So if I just forcefully say there is no text decoration, then it won't decorate it. Uh, although, now that I think about it, uh, we may still want to hover on it to make sure... Well, no, because their cursor is going to change. They're going to notice that that's a link. If they don't notice that's a link, then I'm, I'm going to be really surprised. Um, Dev chat, uh, should probably be a link to the stream as well. Um, link slumps, what are you talking about? Oh, uh, the text dev chatter you're thinking should be a link to the stream. Uh, I don't know. So this, because what I worry about here, talking about this, is this could be a link that would take you to this page, right? So clicking on the, 
the name text itself, I could see someone saying, yeah, that should take me to this page. So that could almost be used as like a refresh, reload this page, kind of like when you're here, if you click on the logo, it keeps you here. Kind of like how the home would as well. Oh yeah, that's funny, Mark's on too. So, um, the watch now makes sense. I, I do want to make it so those are links. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so this is um, better live badge on channel details. We are not committing to dev. We are making uh, UX uh, changes. So we're going to make some UX changes here in this because why not? Websites need it. Uh, oh, Sniper, yeah. Uh, so, funny thing is um, I actually have VS Code running here in the same project at the same time, uh, just in the background. Uh, so, when I switch over to JavaScript in the project, I will sometimes jump into VS Code because it handles that a little bit better. Uh, VS Code can also sometimes do CSS and other things like that better. The only place where Visual Studio usually wins is if I'm doing things in my CSHTML files, uh, or in my .cs files, Visual Studio tends to do a little bit better with those, though there's still some some uh, gray area in that. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and so we got those working. Um, I will push that for now. Um, I wanted to change that main page, so index CSHTML on not pages channels. What are you doing, Brendan? Uh, it's in pages. This one. So on this page, we were talking about those channel cards and saying that the channel name, when you click it, should probably be a link. So yeah, let's do it where we can see the change happen. So we're gonna do it out here. So out here, I just wanna make sure that styling doesn't change. Edit is, uh, whoops, no, don't delete it. Edit as HTML. Which, actually, I'm probably gonna get rid of the bold that's there and just apply it as part of this. Put a class on that piece. Uh, let's see, what is it, slash channels? What is it, uh, slash channels? Slash one is roughly speaking where that's supposed to go. Okay, so the color changed when we did that. Uh, so let's figure out what that supposed what that really should be. Um, so that is an anchor inside of a channel card. So we could just do it that way. We could just say, hey, if you're inside of a channel card, uh, all of your all of your text, unless you've specified otherwise, is getting that specific one. So let's do that. Developers, 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 developers. Welcome, developers, 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 developers from Codebase Alpha. I will greet you all once you're done watching the Twitch ad that you all probably just got subjected to. And I'll apologize for the fact that Twitch made you watch it. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, a, and this was an H4. Why did you get so confused? Oh, man, would you stop it? <laughs> there we go. Uh, yes, there is a raid incoming, uh, which that's a good point. Uh, I just noticed that uh, Codebase Alpha, being a moderator here, might not have uh, been subjected to a uh, an advert. Uh, welcome, everyone. Greetings. Uh, hello, hello, everyone from Codebase Alpha. Uh, welcome to the stream. We absolutely need some hype in here, so we'll have hype and dancing and and, and other fun stuff. Uh, welcome. Greetings. Yes, welcome raiders. Uh, in, instead of fighting you in combat, we are instead going to dance and cheer and welcome you into the stream. Hopefully you're doing some fun stuff over on Codebase Alpha today. Uh, href equals, um, where are we going? Where are we going? Do I want to href this? Um, mm. I want to go to an ASP page that is um, let's 
it's gonna be this one. Uh, where is the... Uh... So, greetings. Um, let's see. Uh, let, actually, Dance, Carrie? Uh, no, no thanks. Uh, I'm gonna let the Chatosauruses do it. They seem to be doing fine. Uh, greetings, welcome. I hope everybody was having fun over in Codebase Alpha. Uh, Link Slumps, edit the schedule. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by edit the schedule, but greetings, everyone. Uh, skull Crusher for life. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome, greetings. Okay, um, channel list. Uh, oh, wow, I did bind it like that. Okay. Since I did it that way, I wired it up that way because I did it based on the channels. Okay, well, yeah, all right, that's fine. Um, oh, uh, wait, where am I? Uh, so we're binding it together that way. I don't know. I'm so confused why, like, I don't, my brain's not working today, everybody. I apologize about that. Um, we're just gonna do this. And I guess we'll bind this. Like that. And then we'll do the same thing we did down here. And then, uh, so we'll do this, because my brain stopped functioning for some reason. Um channel details and then we'll just add in the live uh, live channel dot ID ID we'll just do that because this is bound uh, oh right yes because this is bound on the uh, yeah we're inside of a v4 on these so this is the way I need to do it yeah or well the way I want to do it and then that'll make sense because we're not doing it server side yeah see Every once in a while, my brain will start working again, and uh, we can we can solve those problems. All right. So first off, let's get rid of the A styling that's on there. We need to fix this styling like crazy right now. It is messed up. Uh, so the way that we're going to do that is like this. I am going to remove that styling, and we're going to take a look with a duplicated one. So we're gonna compare these two and make that one look more like this one. Um, I meant the link goes to edit the schedule. Uh, oh, oh yeah, link slumps. We could definitely uh, put in a link to that somewhere. Uh, there's this stream that claims the need for guests but instead just goes right on streaming. Uh, Carrie, if you want to do some CSS stuff with me, I'm I'm here literally right now, and I could pull you in on Skype. Uh, so just let me know. Uh, yes, it is that time of year where our brains stop functioning. Uh, Nerux, uh, we are currently doing a little bit of UX updating on this application to make it a little bit nicer. I'm also thinking I might want to round the corners even on our cards here, uh, just to make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, so this one versus this one uh so first off can i uh computed there we go so what is the computed color on this It's just inheriting my H4 color. Okay, so let's try that. So first off, let's let's actually get ourselves a CSS selector for this. Uh, whoops. Let's get ourselves some CSS. We we wanna we wanna have this thing. Uh, so this is a channel card container. Uh, so channel card container, which we should have. Channel card, channel card, channel card container. Here we go. Um, let's say color inherit. 
Um, text decoration, none. Right, because it's not doing that. Um, let's do this. We're going to say that any, any links that we put inside of the channel card are going to have those effects. So we're going to say color, inherit, and text decoration none. Because we don't, we don't want to have things that looks like links inside of this card. There we go. Okay. Um, we may want to apply a hover to the links so that you can kind of see them. We lost this one. So this is the problem. We don't want this one to pick it up. So this pulled this stuff in because it is a link on the... Wait, what? Okay. I don't know why those were applying there. Uh, it's That seems to have fixed now. We're going to want to take a look at that. Um, This, I would have assumed, would have overridden that. So, yeah. Um, huh. Weird. Um, uh, uh, let's see. You thought you were doing well yesterday. I was lost battle. Uh, except we both tree and... Uh, Currently, I am not qualified to stay here. I have to study some courses, then I'll be back. Nehruks! Uh, oh, you know what? Don't worry about that. You can learn some stuff. We are, we're just messing around with CSS right now. Uh, and actually, the stuff that we're doing, everybody can actually use inside of their own browsers. So just when you're going around on the internet, when a site isn't working, you can actually just go fiddle with it to make it work the way you need it to. Uh, you barely go outside, no problem with pollen. You've got weird stuff going on. Uh... Yeah, exactly, Link Slumps. And on the classic... Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, I'm thinking that I want to actually just class these titles. Uh, and then we'll just get more specific. And, and then it'll be not a problem. I just wanted to confirm that, that everything went back to normal. Uh, so, on the channel card, we want this to be... Um, what do we want this thing to be? Um, card title? Card title. Um, let's add card title class. Which one? This one. And I am going to apply it to the H4, not to the actual anchor itself. Oh, because I need it to be derp, 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 derp. Derpy derp. Like that. Underped. Okay. There we go. Derp gone. Uh, okay. Do, do, do. Try sacrificing some of your family. <laughs> uh, you, you don't have to be the most talented. I'm not the most talented CSSer. 
Uh, so I'm going to drop that because it seems to be good. That that looks like that. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to... So I think people are going to assume that that's a link even without it like underlining when you hover over it. I think most people are going to figure out that's probably a link. Uh, I want this image to also be a link. So let's go ahead and do that while we're thinking about it. That link should go to the same place. So let's do this and then that. There we go. Oh, no. The link messes up that, uh, the link messes up that styling. Um, lighting up some LEDs or applying sensory. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, we're, we're not doing any IoT stuff right now. This is purely uh, web, web dev. Uh, now, if you wanted to do some IoT thing that tied in uh, to the dev stream site, that would be awesome, and I would love to work on that with you because that'd be kind of neat. Uh, maybe change the color of the header. It doesn't have to be underlined. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, some kind of effect when you hover over, but underline I just think looks old and tacky. Um, it's much nicer to change the color. Uh, so, we, we could do something. Uh, I'm not going to bother with that uh, just yet. We'll let someone uh, tackle that at some point. Uh, so, putting this back, what, what killed it about this? Where did we lose our... Derp. Uh, hang on. I apparently totally messed that up. Uh, what is livechannel.id? Live channel doesn't come back with the ID. Really? Is live controller. Uh, so we get all of these. What is actually in this type? Live channel view model. Oh man, we didn't put the ID. Um, so we were never going to be able to link to it. Um, yeah, let's fix that. Prop int id uh, oops channel id there we go problem solved Uh, well, I'm going to go with Kevin, because that seems easier. Welcome, Kevin. Thanks for that follow. Much appreciated. Uh, why did you open over on that screen? Trying to get my head around so much all at once it becomes muddle in my head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Um, styling is bootstrap. Yes. Uh, Yeah, SNB, we definitely do need to consider some uh, accessibility stuff uh, in, in the site at some point. Uh, I'm trying to make it look reasonably nice. Um, uh, Carrie, if you want to check your coins, the command is just coins. Um, Who's have three doesn't didn't have the cards it's in four? Yeah, Lynx Lumps, that's, that's correct. Yep, uh, cards were in four, not in three. Okay, so... This styling, they've shifted over because we have the anchor tags on them. We're going to need to figure out why they're doing that. Uh, but at least the link is now working. So we've got the IDs on those. So clicking on that does take you here. There is a nice live badge. Uh, I think that looks good. 
This watch now button should work as well. It does. Uh, though I do kind of want to change that to open in a new tab when you click it so we don't pull you away from our site. Uh, but the borders on this, it seems to have lost its flexing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this all as HTML and get rid of this so that I can compare what is going on with this one versus what is going on with the one below it. So when I look at this one, we're getting channel card image image because this is channel card image, the image inside of a channel card image. Whereas when I look at the one in Code Rushed down here, uh, this one, it has been pushed over because something, this most likely, has shifted it. So see how the border around this one extends out beyond the border of the container we're in? So it's kind of pushed out there. Uh, the Sniper, thanks for that uh, follow. Much appreciated. So that is what's going on there. This one is not... So it's, the, it's taking the size of the content in it, but it's been shifted over a little bit. Whoops. Didn't mean to click the link. So something pushed it. So there's our container. This is inside it, not taking the correct amount of space. But why? Um, what? Okay, this margin is messing it up. Interesting, that margin is, uh, is making it not work. Um, I wonder why it's doing that. Yeah, it's not holding them. It's not forcing the margin on the right hand side. Huh. Oh, is it because of this? Because we were telling it to take 100% of the space? Yes, that's it. Okay. So there's the problem. Because we added a new container, uh, the width would need to be on this. We were going to do it that way, but then that messes up that one. So the problem is we changed we changed the structure because we made that we we changed that okay I get it I get it um, yeah so. I mean, the short answer is you remove that and then suddenly it works again. But that's only working because those images are the exact size that they are. If they were not that size, we'd have a problem again. Uh, what was rigged? You think? I'm... Uh... Well, we can try it. Um, and apply that to the A instead of the uh, instead of the image. Yeah, we end up with a slightly different 
uh, display issue. Okay, so that one, that's just that now. I feel like that one still needs to be 100%, but we'll, we'll take a look in a second. This one now has some extra space over there. So that takes the whole spot. This is not sitting right. Because the image isn't taking 100%. Let's make the image take 100% also. So let's put this back. We're going to add in another one of these for the A. Do it like that. There we go. Okay. So that does seem to work. So make sure that the image is taking up 100% of the space of the anchor tag and that the anchor tag is what now has that border and then that takes up 100% of what's in there. Okay, that works. Uh, link slumps, yeah, you're, you're technically right. Um, we, we probably shouldn't be using them, but hey, we're using them for now. Um, we, we can fix them at a later date. Yay, it's working. Yay. All right. Um, let's see. So we added in the ID, put it on there. So let's say add ID to live channel view model. That's one commit. The next commit is going to be, uh, what is this? This is um, channel links on live channel cards. Uh, is the overlay not turned on? The overlay might not be turned on. Hey Strife, welcome. Um, I'd be surprised, but uh, here. I'll just reset to make sure it's on. Uh, should be on now. Um, yeah, there you go. Did did something? Did I don't see I don't see a hype command or anything like that that would have triggered the overlay. So were you just asking if it was on? Um, yeah, hype. Swizzle. Oh, you did one earlier? Yeah. Yep, just yell at me if it's ever not on, because uh, I can just bring it back up. Okay, uh, we talked about a little bit of the styling on this, and how uh, on, on the actual, like, card border itself, like this, we were talking about... Uh, why do I still have hover on? No, okay. It's just showing me the the hover style regardless. Okay, that's fine. So channel card uh, border radius. I just want to see what this does. If we do this, is it going to totally bork it? Uh, actually, that's not bad. And then how's the hover look? That hover is not bad. I can't tell if that's sharp. I think it rounded the corners. It did. Um, yeah, I think it looks better with the rounded corners, but I don't want to round too much. So I think maybe six pixels. And then I think we want to do the same thing. So that's on the channel card. So let me just do this before I forget about it. So we're going to grab the border radius on the channel card, uh, which is this one up here. And then I want to apply the same effect on the image, I think. Ooh, do I do it on the image? Border, uh, if I could type. Border radius, uh, we'll start with four pixels and see what that looks like. So we'll trim people's corners and make that match with the card that it's on. 
I think that looks much better. Okay, so we're going to do that same thing. Mark could probably have something to say about whether or not we should be using the same border radius on, on the image as we do on the, on the card itself. But, don't know. So now when we load that, there we go. And in theory, these images, some of them might not have these sharp corners. Some images might be like whatever your picture is. But if you do go to the edges, I want to make sure that we round those corners just so that we don't have a sharp cornered object sitting around that. Uh, so next thing we need to do is, um, yeah, I, I agree. Yep, uh, I, I think that looks uh, better like this. <laughs> Looking like a magic card. Uh, <laughs> funny thing being we totally could style this like a magic card put a little information section right there the watch now button doesn't make all that much sense but yeah that concept does apply so those you can link um, the watch now button yep okay S sweet uh, yes Carrie it looks like a Pokemon card too that is correct um, Round corners on channel cards. Okay. I think those look nice. Uh, let's take a look on. Uh, well, actually, geez, do we? I don't know if we want to tackle that page yet. It's it's got it needs a lot more work. Okay. So something I'm thinking about here on our um, on our homepage. I almost feel like we should flex box this with just like the cards scattered around so that it goes down to the next one and everything uh, so this really just flows through them and don't take as much space for this maybe put the the I'm feeling lucky button over here or something uh, and have it take you there instead of loading it onto this page um, restores a stream from graveyard no no stool penner uh, we are we are summoning uh, channels. We're, we're summoning them, and you need to make sure that you have enough land uh, that you can tap in order to, you know, cast the summon creature or summon channel spell. Yeah, what well, you end up with like uh, channel card under this, so. So what we'd have uh <laughs> so you'd have summon channel in here like that and then summon channel this needs to be um text align right there we go and uh, margin top there you go is that better is that look enough like a magic card for all of you there we made a magic card summon channel <laughs> yes we're making a, a burn deck uh, Yeah, blue blue deck. Yes, we'll make we'll make an entirely counter spell deck. Uh, funny story. Uh, back when I was uh, playing Magic: The Gathering a long time ago, uh, I so I played it when I was in school, and um, I showed up one day uh, at school and I'd made a new deck. And, uh, and if anybody knows Magic: The Gathering, it's roughly speaking a sixty card. You, you have a sixty card deck of which there's some portion uh, is land, and it depends on your deck, but it's you know more than a dozen usually fewer than 20 land land cards like ways of generating mana in your deck now the funny thing is of my 60 card deck uh, i made a deck that had 37 cards dedicated specifically to counter spelling type abilities and i showed up with that deck and i was just like this is going to be hilarious i i have made this deck that basically is just annoying and uh and so that was fun because of the same day that I brought that in, another friend of mine actually had done almost exactly the same deck, and we just happened to show up on the same day. So, absolutely ridiculous, nothing happened. 
because uh, counterspelling the other person's counterspell is really just a funny, funny thing. Yeah, it is absolutely a troll deck. It is like you just show and you're like, funk, funk. Because the funny thing is, some some weren't counterspells. They would bounce the card back into the person's hand. So it's like, oh, you managed to do a thing? Okay, yeah, we're going to undo that. So, like... <laughs> And, and a lot of them had alternate spell costs, so even if I was totally tapped out, a lot of times I could be like, well, actually, I can pick up this land to cast my counterspell, and you're like, wait, what? You, me, no, him, him, me, her, me, me, her, me. Uh... <laughs> Carrie, uh, thank you for gifting that uh, sub to uh, Robert Tables there. Uh, now, now uh, our, our our good friend uh, Little Bobby uh, can uh, can absolutely uh, spam the chat with the hypes, uh, the derps. Uh, what what other ones are in there? Um, uh, love and what's the other one? Think. I had to remember because I, for, uh, I forget because on, uh, yeah, the think. Think. <laughs> I love the think one. Yeah, it's just so good. Although I still need to do some rotation because shock might be my, my favorite emote. And that's hilarious. Nightbot. I wonder what I have that set to. What do I have that set to? My god. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I swear I had that super high, uh, David, I don't, I don't know why it hit you with that. Uh, let me, let me find out when, like, maybe Nightbot reset that limit, I thought I had it set to, like, 30 or something ridiculous, although maybe you got over 30. Uh, that is totally possible, spam protection, excess emotes, uh, why do I even block excess emotes? No, it was set to 40, that's a good point. Yeah, we're disabling that. We're not we're not messing with emotes. Uh, <laughs> Nightbot should no longer block emotes. People should be able to spam with with uh, lots of emotes. I think the limit was set at forty. Uh, so congrats, you managed to exceed forty. Good job. <laughs> How am I gonna spam emotes? Yeah, exactly. Got gotta be able to spam emotes. Uh, hang on. Oh, coated beard! Yeah, I know exactly what those are. Uh, you gotta love those pixel pigs. The pixel pigs. Uh, yeah, fuel snable. You can now turn this into a regular Twitch chat. I love how the bot message was questionable judgment, as if emotes are the questionable. <laughs> No, I don't think it knows you, uh, to be fair. Okay, so I think that works. Let's let's plan on, on adjusting that later. Uh, but for now, I think that's a reasonable improvement there. Uh, on this page, I kind of want to turn these into a card kind of thing too, almost, until we actually get a real calendar here. Uh, I want this display to not be awful. So let's change up what the calendar page does. We'll leave the filtering still terrible for now. We'll fix that later. Uh, but step one is going to be fix the actual calendar page. So let me hide, which one is this? Hide this one? Yeah, hide that one. We don't need that. We'll steal our code from this. So this is our channel cards. So we're going to steal the channel card code and put it over here. So this is an event. Actually, does this is this the V4? It is good. So that means I can just change all this entirely. Uh, you encountered an exception. Good job, Visual Studio. I don't know how you did that, but well done. Let's say an event in events. Okay. And the name of the event is going to be used right here. Let's not deal with an anchor tag just yet. We'll deal with that in a minute. Uh, did I? Okay, good. I only copied that part. 
Um, starts. Uh, local start time. Right, because you specified that. Okay, ends. Ends at this. Okay. And then we want to display this. Um, let's say duration. And I see some stuff happening in chat. I will get back to all of you in just a second. Let me uh, let me take a look at that. Um, event and events, and it's going to be a channel card for now. We're not supposed to put this inside of a UL, I know. That's why we're going to change our UL to a div. And let's see, did this work like at all, or is this a complete and total failure? Uh, let's see. Um, yes, rock beats paper. Uh, Strife, you won! Congratulations! Today has been a VS29 update day for me. Uh, oh, was there a 2019 update uh, today? I, I didn't look. There might have been a... They might have had the little banner there and I didn't notice. Uh, good thing that last CSS thing you did was a component. Uh, link slumps. No, this isn't actually going to be that. Like, I'm hoping that it doesn't match that at all. Um, I just wanted to start here. Um... Why? 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 What? What? No results? That's results. You, you're right, we could we could componentize a card in some way. Um, and, and do something with that, but I'm, I'm not going to display the image or anything like that. So this is going to be a, a much simpler version. We could, we still could componentize that, but, um, um that's an empty div. Um, did I, I must've totally butchered something. debug this in view good old rock nothing beats rock throws rock through paper uh mobabo that's cheating events that's an event right there Okay. Uh, derp. I left something in live channels. Probably the link. It's a, it's a link. That's why it's freaking out. Uh, yeah. Let's just get rid of the image. The image isn't going to get to... We're cutting that anyway. Because it's actually bound to the property, that's why it can't even display with it, because... compiling the template that I oh 
because it's bound, uh, having that in there again is a problem. So there we go. Okay, fixed. Uh, so now this card needs some kind of shape. Um, so next thing, let's not do this as LIs with a UL and everything. Let's just make these, I don't know. I don't even know what to do with these things. That's going to look awful. Yep, kind of does. Um, <laughs> HP5. I don't even know what that means, but cool. All right, and next thing, this box that we've got all this stuff in, we need to do something with it. Get rid of that. So this is our... A uh, container no longer needs to really be a thing, necessarily, uh, but we can maybe do something with it. Uh, but this is taking up way too much space, because um, we told it to take up 80% of its containing space. So let's not be a channel card anymore, because it's not a channel card. It's not a channel card. This is an event card. So let's go make the event card class in our site CSS. Do we have anything on the calendar page already? Uh, channel view styling, view channel styling. Nope. Whoops. Nothing calendar related on here at all. So let's And channel card styling, and we're gonna do um, calendar bent card styles. Calendar card styles. It's going to be dot that, and then where's channel card? Come here, channel card. We're starting from you as the base, and then we're going to remove stuff like width 80%. Um, no. Uh, some of these other settings might have to adjust in order to make that work. But let's, yeah, there we go. So now it's taking 100%. Woohoo! Yay! Um... What if I let gravity pull the rock through the paper? Then uh, then uh, gravity would uh, beat paper, Mobabo. Uh, this is why the stream is a winner. The stream is a winner? Cool. Uh, rock event beats everything eventually except water. <laughs> Fair. Okay, um... Container? Oh, container is not an event card container. Um... Container inside of there. Uh, needs to buffer itself around this, so it needs a little bit of margin in the- yeah. There we go. We'll- we'll pad all the stuff in this, and it will take up the full space of the thing it is in, which is totally valid. We absolutely wanted to do that. So now that is buffered. However, we need to shrink that down, so let's take a look at this right here uh, well, like I don't even know what to do with that one then 
Ooh, someone's playing Hangman, uh, and the Hangman is gonna die. Um... Oh, I know the word! I know the word! I know what it is! No! Oh! Okay, good. <laughs> I saw Stool Planner come in with something. <laughs> I got worried there. But SMB managed to save it, so good job. Good job, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I was getting worried. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't think that guy was going to make it. Uh, <laughs> he looked scared. Uh, also, uh, let's see. Who else was... Uh, yeah, uh, Adrian, welcome. Greetings. Just saw that you, you showed up. And uh, let's see. So that's actually not that bad, having a little card there. And the... Um, Watch now. I actually I don't think makes sense here. So let's let's just cut that. We're not gonna have a watch now button. Um. Um. Actually, ooh, what would it be? Uh, go to channel. Does that make sense? Go to go to channel. Yeah. How do we want to? Switch these up. Um, I kind of feel like there's a size this needs to be. Uh, 143. Does that jump you up to the 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 badge holder ship? I don't know what it, I don't know what they're at right now. Yes, it does. That uh, just tops carry. <laughs> Congratulations on the golden badge, uh, and uh, thank you for the biddies. Much appreciated. <laughs> Bit war. See, this is why I need this is why I need my sword fighting emotes to be on here. Uh, if anyone didn't see the emotes that we had done here on the channel, I had more emotes done than we actually have like, you know, emotes unlocked in the stream. So let me toss them up on the screen and you can all see what is this? Yeah, there they are. So we we have these emotes now. Oh my god. <laughs> Calm down. And, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> the bit war rages on. Uh, so these are the emotes that I actually had, uh, commissioned for the channel. And, uh, <laughs> the, the fight continues. Uh, so what I was going to comment on is these two emotes in the middle here. Uh, the, the sword fighting ones would be perfect for a moment like this. When, uh, when, when people are fighting over stuff. Uh, so... As soon as we have, uh, like, one or two more emote slots, I will be bringing these guys in so that you can have sword fights on the stream. Uh, you can have Chattosauruses fighting. Be kind of fun. But these are actually what, uh, what, what we had set up for the channel. Right now we have, uh, Hype, Love, and Derp, and Think are the ones that are currently unlocked for our Tier 1 people. And then Tier 2 and 3, I think I have Dance and Shock up right now. Uh, but I want to rotate them around because we have more emotes than people can use. But fun stuff. <laughs> and the the evil grins, yes. Who who doesn't love evil grins? Uh, <laughs> uh, I I worry about the sensitivity of this microphone and actually doing like an evil laugh on stream. I try to avoid it a little bit. Uh, what did Evil Grins, what number did you get to? Oh, nice, yes, there you go. The, uh, just, just watch out, someone's going to one-up that and you'll still claim the better number. Uh. <laughs> uh, take care of the Michael Jolly, yeah, see? See? Some, someone went above you, but, but still, still the more interesting number. Uh, take care. Thank, thank you for the biddies and the hype and everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm tempted to just toss on a, uh, a, a static width and say that's good enough for our initial version of this. And we can come back later and actually make it a little bit nicer. So let's, let's just do that. 
because uh, there's no sense in really messing with it. So I'm just going to set 200 pixels and we can adjust on the screen to get it to a reasonable number, whatever that is. Actually, 200 is not, not bad. Um, actually, let's, let's adjust the days just to see how bad it gets. So the 18th, we should also be doing. So Saturday at that. It jumps down to the new line, so it's going to cut a little bit on some of these. Which is not terrible, but let's just give it a little bit of buffer on here, just to make it fit a little bit better. Um, 360, uh, Chris, welcome. Thanks for that follow, much appreciated. Um, 200, 210 pixels, yeah, we'll just do that. And yes, I know that I, I fit that one, but not all of them, but let's just get the, you know, covers, you know, 80% of them. But when Wednesdays would be the worst uh, if we if we had a Wednesday. If I could click. Yeah. So whatever makes Wednesday fit, we'll go with that, and then that will cover the ninety percent case. Two two two. Hey, plus it's two two two. So that's like a third of. Uh, Adrian's uh, biddy total. <laughs> there we go. So we'll just set it to that width. It'll hold it. Uh, do we want to set a height? You know what? I kind of do. Uh, no, because we might need to expand if something if something causes a wrap. So okay, we'll do that. Uh, Two Wolf Design, welcome. Thanks for that follow. Much appreciated. If I only had 77 more bits, I could truly beat... I don't know, 77 more bits? Oh, 77. Seven, yeah. Yeah, 777 seven, seven would be another good one. Uh, or or if you could get all the way to 1337, uh, one, one, three, that'd be another good stopping point. So there, there are certain good stopping points for, uh, for total numbers there. Um, what is love? Hype, uh, Adrian. Uh, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Uh, <laughs> you you have your emotes back. Uh, they must have been gone for a little while. I know, sniper. I know you gotta you gotta do the headbutt. You gotta be and then you gotta be like, wait, wait, him, me, no, him, you, me, him, no, me, him, you, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the uh, so Twitch Prime doesn't auto renew. You actually have to. You you have to manually do your Twitch Prime sub every every month. It's kind of kind of inconvenient. I wish that Twitch would just allow me to say, "Hey, every month send my Twitch Prime one here," except it costs them it, like it costs them money to do it, and they don't really get anything out of it. So I think that's why they don't automate it. But I think it would make both the viewer and the streamer happy if those just auto renewed, uh, like you know, make you set it to auto renew, uh, but. Like, if that were even an option, I think I think that would be nice. Yeah. Uh, hey, Kevin, welcome. You finally said hi. You followed a little while ago, and yes, I agree, Sniper. It is it is a classic. It's a it is a note. Those are not people that you actually want to be like. Kind of movie. <laughs> but it also lets you explore. Uh, yeah, no, 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 Robert. No, I agree. That's why I say set it to renew if you want to renew to that person. And if you don't want to, don't have it automatically. Yes, it has to be an option. 100% agree. Uh, because that is one of the nice things about that one, is it doesn't automatically renew. Um, the interesting thing is I actually do send my Twitch Prime one to the same person every month and have for the past 19 months. So it's been going the same place. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I want it to just renew and go there. It'd be much easier for me. Um, uh, hey oh, welcome. Greetings. All right, um, do, 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 do. here, uh, the site's running, right? Yeah, so which one, there, there's the page. Okay, I think that'll work. I want a little bit of buffer above these. So uh, on the channels page, calendar page, this one, uh, above this, we need some buffer around this. So let's call this class, um, this is the events list. 
we'll do this, and if we happen to display this anywhere else, we can do that. Um, so the calendar event stuff, we're gonna make this one, and... I'm just gonna do a margin top for now, and we'll just take a look at what it looks like with 12 pixels on the top. So it's just gonna put in that little bit of buffer there, and if we happen to also put a buffer around the cards, that's fine too. I just wanna make sure there's a little bit of gap between where these show up and where that shows up. I think we wanna go bigger than 12 though. Event list, margin on the top, 16, 20, yeah. So we'll do 20, and at some point, someone can come by and change these to nicer mechanisms than that. But I think that list now looks like it is definitely not part of the top. The next thing we really need to do with this page is adjust this uh, little filter, the filtering controls that we have up top uh, to just make their display a little bit better. Because first off, I don't need it to be, like it does not need to be that wide. We can probably show country and time zone next to each other. Uh, and then date and tag selection can probably be side by side or something like that also. Or maybe we shrink down this so that these three just occupy this space right here. And then the tag selection goes beside it. But something like that just to shrink up that display I think would be good. Let's commit this change because this is switching these to be cards. Uh, show events as cards on calendar. So they're, they're basic cards for now. They're not perfect, but it looks it at least looks a little bit nicer. Hey, Suna, welcome. Um, yeah, we're doing a little bit of CSSing today uh, just because we want to get this stuff... Um, just get this stuff set up the way we want. Um, yeah, no, SNB, the commands command has, has been busted for a little while since I... I think I might have mentioned on stream last time that... that um, uh, the bot is in the process of being changed. Uh, I didn't do it on stream, but you might remember that I mentioned uh, that I was thinking about taking our bot and changing it from just being an ASP.NET app to actually being two apps. One that's ASP.NET and is our overlay and everything, and one that is actually just the bot running as a separate process and might end up being like WPF or something like that. And so I think that's the boat that I'm in right now. Uh, I think it's a NetCore 3 WPF app that's actually running the commands right now. Uh, if I remember the state of things, it was whenever I said, hey, I had this... <laughs> I, I, I felt like doing the crazy. Uh, I might have started that crazy back then. Uh, I'm not done with it. We'll probably do some of that on stream, but I wanted to make sure I get the dev streams project uh, ready to go. Yeah, every once in a while, we devs just get the f the, the the feeling like... Hey, yeah, I want to do this crazy thing. And when, you, when you're working on work stuff, you're like, yeah, no, I can't do that. But hey, you're working on a side project, you can be like, eh, yeah, I feel like doing crazy. We're going to do crazy. So it's the, it's the advantage of uh, side projects. Which, hey, it gives me a chance to use a uh, NetCore 3 WPF app. And uh, I would not be able to do that uh, in a workplace. So... I would, in fact, I would recommend against it to any business owner. Don't don't make a NetCore 3 WPF app just yet. Okay, um, I think that ought to work. Let's take a look. Uh, so first, I'm gonna get rid of that. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, this is committed. So let's see what we can't do about that display. Well, no, you know, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to make a card. Because um, that is absolutely something that we can set as a good first issue. And maybe I'll do it down the road, but at the same time, it's also a pretty easy thing to do. Um, adjust adjust um, calendar filters layout. Let's adjust the filters on the calendar page win forms does work great especially with all the new stuff um, I'm gonna do this real fast because I think it'll work 
Um, whoops. Shape fill. No fill. Okay, uh, what do we want? We want, roughly speaking, uh, probably a section here for... Uh, we will do a no fill on this also. And then duplicate that over to here. Let's shrink that to make it make sense. And then put one of these down here. And then this is the display. And inside of this, we can say events. Whoop, that text is totally wrong. Events list here. Um, uh, dates and time zones selection here. This will be tag selection here. Roughly speaking, right? That doesn't seem totally crazy. So let's go ahead and grab that and do one of those. Okay, so now back to where's the GitHub page? Right here. I'm hoping I can just paste in here. Uh, let's adjust the filters on the calendar page uh, to have a less space intensive layout. Um, hey, it looks like it worked. Um, preview? Yeah, okay. Um, um, are you sure it flows if the page resizes? The tags should be below the date time. Extra credit if you can hide the tag selection when we're down to mobile sized display. Uh, we'll do that. Um, Uh, anybody say anything in chat that I should make sure I take care of? Uh, wait, what? Uh, the sniper! Have a good one! Take care! Hopefully we'll see you back sometime. Um, lucky number seven. Uh, more morning-ish? Um, it is, unless you're on the west coast it is of the United States, I should say, because you are on the west coast of Europe-ish, um, I wouldn't describe this as morning. No. Def definitely wouldn't. Not considering it's like 6 p.m. your time or something like that, I think. Uh. <laughs> Snipes? Snipes? Oh, the sniper. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the sniper was here. Snipes, snipes. I don't know no snipes. Alright, so that, that looks good. Um... And then a tag selection, yep. So adjust that layout. That's absolutely something someone could take care of. Uh, let's make a pull request for this that's at least a draft pull request. Because as it stands, this is ready to go in if it needs to. Um, and I'll rename it and fi I'll fix up the name and everything a little bit. Uh, I just want a record of that so that I know that it's pretty much ready to go. So we, we make sure we merge it in when we can. Uh, what's this yelling about? Is live that? What? On this page? No, okay, that must just be from, from, uh, previous state of things. Um. Yeah, this page, I mean, a lot of our pages could use a little bit of styling help, but generally speaking, aren't, aren't that bad right now. Uh, the calendar page look okay? Yep, yeah, that looks fine. Um, I 
kind of need to f I need to fix up the way we do the styling when we are in the uh, in the themes because the themes don't display our cards very well right now so we're gonna have to figure that one out uh, it's the challenge of having themes they make it so it's nice so people can choose dark or a light theme but meh uh. <laughs> And Lucky wins rock, paper, scissors, and is apparently very happy about it. And SNB uh, tells everybody uh, what he thinks about the bot's uh, selection of winners. Nice. Okay. Really? That's, 20, that's funny. I don't know where it's getting that number from. Oh, cool. That, that works well. Let's, um, you know what? Uh, we're actually going to make that a real, that, that pull request a real one. And so we're ready for review that. And actually, let's change the name um, to live channels and calendar events. That's really what we changed. Live channels and calendar events. That's, that's the adjustment. Uh, and we'll merge that in later. I feel like doing something we haven't done in a long time on this channel. Why did I close Visual Studio? Um, lucky. Uh, the only thing that we have in here is Bootstrap 3. Is really the only thing that, that we're really using that, that messes with the UI at all. Um, What's it called? Uh, what's it called? Uh, hang on. Um, is this what it was called? Is this the thing? Someone showed me this yesterday, uh, which I thought was an interesting sight. Um, it's in some ways good. In some, and so I tried it a little bit yesterday. It had some issues, but it also did some things nicely. So, uh, if anyone out there is uh, interested in doing a little bit of programming, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Uh, create a new custom session. Wait, what's create a new session versus custom session? I don't know what custom would be. So, here's what we're going to do. Uh, C sharp and unit. And... I hope everybody out there is uh, planning on doing some programming with us today. Hopefully. We'll see. Uh, do, do, do. Number change, number names. Ooh, that sounds that sounds painful. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Lucky, we're, we're using Bootstrap. Uh, we, I think I mentioned Bootstrap 3. Uh, if boots if Suna equals smart coding equals one. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, Suna. I don't know what you're trying to what you're trying to do there. Set set your coding value equal to one, or is coding a boolean and you're assigning it a bit that's going to be true? Count coins. Oh, I can totally mess with all the Europeans in here because we're gonna because this will be U.S. currency, which is awesome because it looked like this website was used and probably created by Europeans so it's funny when when it then is using US currency because why did they do that but it looks like they grabbed the uh, the kata from someone in the US so they just pulled that from there so let's do it here's our number this is our session ID Bravo Lima 7 Delta Zulu whiskey and keep in mind this is case sensitive so if anyone wants to join in that is the code we're gonna be using um, Uh, yeah, and a lot of languages that will evaluate to true. Language, uh, one usually means, uh, yeah, on or true. Yes, Suna, exactly. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, one will evaluate to true in most languages. So, let's go ahead and open up a dashboard. 
Uh, and as I said, I, I, I pasted that in chat a couple of times there. So if anybody is interested in joining this, that's where you want to go. Uh, I am going to join a session, my own session, which I think it might let me do. Cool, it did. Okay, so I am a butterfly, which I guess makes all of us a butterfly. Uh, feel free to join in, any, anyone who's interested. You just go there and you join and you put in that you put in that code. Where a task is set, there is a host and basically the live share URL. It's free access for all devs to complete the tasks. Looks similar to this actually. Oh yeah, lucky. No, no. Uh, yeah, that is totally a thing uh, that you could absolutely do. Uh, just let everybody let everybody come in and potentially fix the problem. Uh, sounds terrifying, to be honest. Um, So if anybody's interested in hopping in, this this is uh this is the thing. Uh, let's let's see if I can work in a very very tiny amount of space. Uh, oops. And I'm gonna get a uh, I'm gonna get a folder open. We're gonna I'm gonna get myself a little test app to run in, uh, so I don't have to write the code there in that uh, in that view, because that looks difficult. Uh, let's open up a folder, and we're going to call this, um, 2019. Okay. Look at that tiny little terminal we got there. So much space. Uh, oh, is everybody, everybody's coming in? Cool. Let's let's see if if they're in here. Uh, you know what? Here, um, once you're in, just go ahead and run the test once, and it should appear over there if it works. I should actually get auto refreshing or something. There we go. Okay. We got them coming in now. So, looks like we all have failing tests, so go us. Uh, .net uh, new and I want to do class library. Should be. Uh, I'll say end unit. Let's do Mictor, uh, what is this? Which which one did we do? Which which thing did I do? Read me. Uh, this is currency. So, so, go into the currency folder and we're gonna say .NET new end unit. This should give me a quick little end unit project. And then I'm gonna do .NET test. And should work. Okay, test pass one. Fantastic. So it made unit test one. That's great. I don't care about unit test one. We're gonna hop over here. We're gonna grab. Well, actually, now that I think about it, it could be whatever I want in here. So let's let's just do this. Make a new file for currency.cs. And this will just be currency tests for now. We have currency tests. All right, there we go. Uh, and we'll just call this currency tests. So if everybody's doing the same kind of thing I am doing, that's uh, basically what you want to set up is this. Uh, I don't need a setup for this. Uh, yeah, no, no problem, uh, Suna. <laughs> no problem either, Link Slumps. Uh, take as much time as you need. 
All right, so so they started off with this silly thing of like hiker because it's a hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy thing. So they start you off with basically nothing and want you to build it. So let's take a look at the README. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So uh, actually, I'm gonna leave it at 100%, and uh, I will just read it. So it says there are four types of common coins in the U.S. currency. There are quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. Quarters are worth 25 cents. Dimes are worth 10. Nickels are worth five, and pennies are worth one. There are six ways to make change for 15 cents. A dime and a nickel, a dime and five pennies, three nickels, two nickels and five pennies, a nickel and 10 pennies, 15 pennies. That sounds right. How many ways are there to make change for a dollar using these common coins? That's not really a great question. Um, so realistically, if they were gonna do this, this should say something along the lines of, uh, write a method that can take uh, and so this is how we're gonna change it everyone so we're gonna say they can take an uh, amount of money and return the set of coins needed to total that, that amount so that's our new thing. There's our there's our instruction because that that actually sounds like a real challenge. So that's what we're gonna write. I think we can do it. So first things first. Um, I need to make a class here. So did they use a class in theirs? Uh, they just did this. So we'll start here. We're going to change this to currency and public static int answer. Um, what kind of result do we want? Um, let's do this. Uh, int pennies, int nickels, int dimes, int. And actually, let's do it that way. So it's going to be P, N, D, and Q. Um, we're going to make this a Ooh, want, uh, do we return back all the ways? OMG, it might be. Uh, get uh, get change options for int total. Need more space. So we're gonna make this a uh, return back a list of change options list of change option using system collections generic and I need to make change option be a thing so public class change option is gonna be a thing we're gonna have that and then we're gonna do a prop that is an int uh, pennies prop int nickels nicks nickels prop int Dimes, prop, int, quarters. I think that's reasonably readable. I can understand what's going on here. Uh, so, return new list of change options. But actually, before I do that, throw new not implemented exception. And uh, I will take a look at everything that's going on in chat here in a second. Let's make this the real test. So we're going to say, uh, instead of that, we're going to say get change option. Should return nothing uh, given um, zero. So this will be the special case of we, we got zero. So I want to say currency dot get change options for zero. 
and this is going to be options equals that and assert dot uh, options is empty Oops. options so that is supposed to be empty when I call dot net test we'll see what happens okay um, we have a oh uh, not implemented exception that's what we wanted to get good um, the result is int for the number of possible combination of coins, isn't it? Or are you changing the question? Uh, oh, yeah, so lucky. I, I changed the question. <laughs> yeah, I changed the question. Because uh, the question that they asked was a silly one. It's just like, they were just like, how many options is it for this one case? It's just how many ways are there for this one case? And it's like, oh, okay. I kind of feel like that's a silly one. I think that you should support all of that, which I guess I guess you could respond back with just a number of ways. So yeah, okay. We'll we'll do it. We'll do it that way. We'll do numbers of ways. Um that can take any amount of money and return the um Well, you know, because to be honest, in, or in order to figure that out, you have to return back that set anyway, right? Yeah, you've got the set. We're doing it this way. Why not return the options? So, first test we're going to make pass is this one. It's the empty one. It should work fine. <laughs> yeah, you had to figure out the data anyway, in order to say how many there were, really. So why not just make it work? Okay, so that that makes that happen. So we have our first test passing. Yay. Let's make our next test pass. Uh, so the next test will be... Um, uh, let's see. Uh, penny only options. Given um, sub uh, five, so we're gonna have uh, a test case we're gonna use here. So we're gonna say test case, test case one, whoops, uh, three, four. So we'll do two, three, and four are our test cases here. And the parameter we'll pass in is um, total. Um, each of these should only have one option. You know, I don't need to do a collection assert because we're going to do this. Um, so this is going to be assert dot uh, assert equals, and it's going to be options dot single. We're going to add a using link on the top, and we're going to say option option dot pennies so the expected is going to be total and then pennies because we can kind of just do that oh whoops single and then select that uh, no uh, we would just do pennies right what am I smoking everybody I have no idea but whatever it is it's good cuz I'm doing crazy stuff over here uh, uh, would you not do a five input and also pass into the test case a boolean of expected result uh, oh yeah, no lucky I can for the other ones except on this one I don't need to because the total and the number of pennies are the same uh, So for other test cases, yes, I, I would do it with two inputs one of the 
the total and then the other one maybe the expected number of options or the actual value of those options uh, which which we can do so yes something like that but in this case it just matches so I like the idea of your your test case matches whatever the scenario is for it so let's see so on this one we can just say uh, we can do an if total equals zero whoops return back an empty list we can just do one of these otherwise return back I still have that good return back this with a single item in it uh, and if, if anyone thinks it's hilarious that I'm doing this uh, this is actually the way I usually recommend people do TDD uh, so normally I would I would tag out and pass this to whoever whomever I'm working with and say hey it's your turn so always this is an option and this is the all pennies option so that one should always be in here uh, which actually now that I think about it we could extract this as a variable so why don't we do this um, we'll call this var options equals that and in this case we'll just return options immediately if uh, if the total is zero and otherwise um, we will return options at the end turn options that'll be the end of the method but then we're going to have this one happen first and it's not going to do that it's just going to be options add and we're going to add in our new that so let's actually just steal it add that there we go fantastic that should work so now what we're doing is we create the options list we check to see if the total is zero if it is we just go ahead and return at this point uh, and then otherwise we go ahead and add choices which maybe we'll reverse that and make it nest it doesn't really matter but either way that is the all pennies option that we can do every single time do 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 Derp. I totally derped that. Uh, and US, is there a limit like the UK that you can use pennies up to? No, Lucky, there absolutely isn't. Uh, which is why you'll get the hilarity of like someone really angry about some parking fine or something and they'll go in with like a uh, a wheelbarrow full of pennies and uh, it is just an awful thing to do because it is not the person at the like office where you're taking those pennies it is not their fault that you got whatever fine you got <laughs> like you got no it is it is like which is just a horrible thing because it's like you just ruined some regular person's day because someone else did something and that's just dumb uh gavin xbox uh welcome thanks for that follow much appreciated and pennies anything over 100 is actually not considered legal tender in the uk lucky that is uh first off kind of kind of crazy uh that it's that is that low uh Although, to be fair, I do want to just get rid of the penny entirely in the U.S. It does not actually have any buying power of its own. So I would rather everybody just have to bring in all their pennies and exchange them for uh, real currency that's actually, you know, used to facilitate uh, any kind of purchasing power. Because pennies just don't do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Voight. Yeah, they totally stuck it to the man by ruining a low-level employee's day. Yep, totally did. <laughs> okay. So, that case seems to work. Um, let's see. Um, 
return uh, pennies and nickels for uh, so let's see uh, let's see pennies and nickels options given sub 10 so if we're sub 10 all of our options are gonna be only pennies and nickels so let's do instead of these whoops oh man if only I could remember the keyboard shortcuts for these so we'll do five six seven eight and nine but then with this one we need to do some extra stuff um, These should all have, so this should have one option. These should all have two options because it can either be all pennies or a nickel and pennies for all of those. And then on this, whoops, I'm gonna keep doing that, huh? Oh, it's gonna be nickels and pennies and nickels and pennies. Um, So the all I can just check for, but uh, the second one, we need to cover that. Um, Uh, oh, did Canada get rid of their pennies? Yeah, we we should um, we should totally get rid of pennies. What is this? Not exceeding twenty pence. What? That's insane. Wow. They're just really mean about that. Just not letting people use their money. <sighs> yeah, these test cases, I don't really like them right now, actually. Um, I kind of feel like this should be a separate one, and then that makes it a little bit easier. Because now I can go... Um, uh, what? There's only two cases here, so this could be... Case number one, they're all, uh, and then case number two is going to be, um, that'll be one, two, three, and four. Uh, that was supposed to happen there, but it hasn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to get rid of pennies and things like that. Okay, so that is the total. And this is int um, options count. And then that last one is int pennies in... Let's say pennies with nickel. Uh, we'll do that. And since I'm out of space because we're mashing it onto the screen to be able to see the chart there, for anybody else that's actually trying it, is, is anybody else actually trying it? Uh, no, I haven't loaded mine. So someone is, uh, the, the hyena is, is working back there and I'm working here instead. Um, so that's what we said for this one, which means there should be a first and a, there should be two options every time. So we're gonna say assert are equal to and 
it's gonna be options dot count and then assert are equal and it's going to be total uh, whoops no not total it's going to be pennies with nickel with nicka with nickel I'm gonna fix that <clears throat> should equal options last pennies and then this one should be it should be one nickel so two choices one nickel that number of pennies and this should be first number of pennies should be the total okay let's try running that this is gonna fail because we haven't implemented nickels yet but that's good <laughs> yes I should go click run more so so you can see that uh, I, I agree so currency line 38 uh, expected two but was one yep that sounds right because we did not actually return a second option If I knew the keywords that coding used, I'd be okay. I'd end up just uh, sitting doing math. <laughs> I have no idea what bad word. Uh, I'd? I have no idea why it thought I'd was a bad word, uh, Suna. The Twitch auto mod is not always the smartest thing ever. It must know about some kind of offensive thing that some of us have never heard of. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that we need to do this. We need to set up, um, well, uh, so I want to leave the total alone. We need to never touch that total. So we need to say, um, int temp equals total. Well, temp uh, greater than five, uh, we'll subtract nickels. Or we need to know how many times it divides in. So you know what? We're actually just going to do to total divided by five. Int max nickels equals total divided by five. Uh, actually, no, I'm supposed to do this the easiest way possible. Uh, so we're actually just going to say if total greater than 5, then uh, we want to add options add new change option. Simplest way possible. What are you doing, Brendan? Got to do it like this. Nickels equals 1. Pennies equals total minus five there we go that ought to work uh, it's including the Y which is in f which is offensive oh cuz it's oh yes I see that so it must just see that as like ignoring the punctuation or something Yeah, that, that makes sense, Lucky. I don't know what the offensive term is, but I, I do get the concept. Um, so. Yep, makes sense. You gotta, you gotta try to catch those somehow, because you can't let people just get around them. Okay, so those tests seem to work, so we got that. Um... So then once we get to dimes, that's where it gets interesting, because all of a sudden, we have more options. Um, whew. We're going to say return dime options uh, 
uh, given sub 25. So let's say the first one is, well, you know what? I'm gonna make the, the individual cases for a dime. Let's do the individual cases where it's, uh, no, cause they'd always still have the other options. Yeah, exactly. What what Lucky's saying there. Uh, you could you can get in any swear words you want. It'd be like if you did this. Like it'd be like if you tried to do that in order to get it past the the auto mod, for example, and then it wouldn't be able to catch that. So I'm just kidding. Love you guys, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. I was I was actually working with some PHP devs yesterday. <laughs> I just had to take the chance to do that because it was good. Uh, are the letter I and D together, man? Uh, no, no, no. I think uh, I think the Y was required sooner, but I I don't know. Uh, I don't even know what it means. But uh, what Lucky pointed out was the auto mod was 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 doing that one. Yeah. So the auto mod. Uh, interpreted some extra letters that uh, yes exactly yep that's how moderators work they can't actually tell what's going on return dimes given sub 25 so if we did 11 <laughs> there you go Voight there you go Yeah, the problem is, uh, around the world, there are a lot of offensive terms that are used for various things, and many of us don't know what uh, half of those are. So, it's like, I've never even heard of that uh, offensive term before, because it's just not used where I am. Uh, let's do some sample test, let's do some sample test cases, because uh, I can't do all of them. Uh, as much as I'd love to be able to just do all of the test cases, so oh, we're doing sub 25 to return dime options because we want to be below quarter. Uh, so let's do 24. Uh, how many options should 24 have? Uh, let's see. Let's just walk through them manually, as like regular people. So 24 is going to have. 24 pennies, or tw yeah, tw 25 pennies, no, 24 pennies, uh, it's going to have um, a dime and uh, 14 pennies, it's going to have a dime, a nickel, and 9 pennies, it's going to have 2 nickels, and four pennies it's gonna have um, so all pennies uh, you know what I should have done this with with the nickels first and then because then we could approximate what how we're actually going to apply it so there was there was pennies 24 so let's actually write this as d0 n0 v 24 and then we're gonna say d0 N1 P19 D0 N2 P14 D0 N3 P9 and 4 and 4 so that's that's also 24 and then this one is going to be one dime no nickels and 14 pennies. One nickel and nine pennies. Two nickels and four pennies. Can't do three nickels, but we can go to two dimes, no nickels and four pennies. And is that all my options now? I think that's all my options. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's all of them. 
Um, wait, dabbing is associated with drugs somehow? What? How is that e like, isn't that just like a nerd, like, celebration thing that, like, people did for, I don't know? Ugh. Thanks, people and your drugs. Three. Uh, so that's the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. So we're going to say nine of them. So... With nine, it should be Yep. Options count uh, should be options count. I don't need to look at what the options are. We're just going to confirm that we got the correct number of them, which is not a perfect test of that, but we can do some specific tests on that. We'll add some additional test cases. So we'll do 24, 23 should be the same, 22 and 21. All those should work, This should be the same. Because we didn't we didn't uh, change the dimes of the nickels. <laughs> yes, making a game is actually really really uh, time consuming. Sooner takes quite a while. Um, okay, so when I run this, we are not going to get the correct answer. So the test is going to fail. Those four tests failed because we were expecting nine, but it was two. Because, why was it only two? Oh, because I didn't even implement the repeating nickels. I didn't even do repeating nickels. I should do that first. Yep, let's do repeating nickels first. Repeating nickels first. Um... No, because, yeah, because, you, oh, no, I gotta do them at the same time, because you can't, um, you can't do that. Um, uh, one of the things on my to-do list after, fi after finishing that website is going back and fixing my bot, although I do admit uh, building a game in Unity has been on my list for a long time. Um, Chris, welcome, thanks for that follow, much appreciated. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so that is the total number of nickels. So let's do this in the order that, that we were attempting to do it. Um, so four max nickels. We're going to do, um, up to and including that number, starting at 1, we're going to say options, add, new, change option, and it is going to have nickels equal to i, and pennies equal to total minus, and I don't really need the parens for this actually, um, i times 5. Yeah. Which means we don't need that anymore.
will return nickel and dime options given sub 25. Um, how many ways are there to do 11? Well, there's all 11 pennies, or there's... So for that we have uh, 0, 0, 11, or we have 0, 1, 6, or 0, 2, 1, or we have 1, 0, 1. That looks to me like four options for 11. Uh, let's try 19. Uh, let's actually do 16 because it's a little easier. Uh, actually, just to make sure that we can, we're going to do it as 17. So 17 is going to be uh, 0, 0, 17, 0, 1, 12. 0, 2, 7, 0, 3, 2, uh, 1, 0, 7, 1, 1, 2. So that makes six options. There we go. Um, Link slumps. You can use lists if you want. Uh, yes, Voight, we're just doing a, we're just doing a kata. I didn't update my message, which I should do so people know we're doing a kata. So they're not like, what are you doing? And uh, in order to do that, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go to do that. Yep, we're just doing a kata for the sake of doing a kata. Because we haven't done one in forever here on the stream, and I felt like it. Hey, hey, past nine, failed six. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six. So those are all failing. Expected nine, but was five. Um, expected four, but was three. Interesting. And eleven. Wait. Oh, because I didn't add in the dimes. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. We're missing the dimes. So that means that nickels probably worked correctly. Uh, so we're going to say max dimes equals this divided by 10. There's max, max dimes there. And then this is going to be dimes equals i. And we need to use multiple nickels as well. So instead of I, let's rename this to dimes. Because then what we can do is this. We can say, repeat this. Let's make sure we can actually see this. Dimes. Nickels and pennies get created like this. So this, instead of being that, is going to be nickels. Instead of being max dimes, it gets, it's going to be relative max nickels. This will start at zero. This will start at zero. And that will add in the penny option as well. So then that lets us remove this. And then let's move this one in as well. So this is where max nickels is going to come from. But max nickels is actually going to be... Um, total minus dimes times 10 divided by 5 will get us our max nickels. Uh, 
Then we'll add in all the nickel options. Okay, I think that might work. Total, oh, oops, total minus uh, nickels times five. We'll do like this. And we're going to subtract dimes times 10. Whoops. If I didn't just butcher that, which we're going to find out. Illy! Hey, welcome. Greetings. Long time no see. Uh, Link slumps. They can, they, they can take some time. Uh, nickels. Uh, wait, what? Nickels less than or equal to max. Di oh, yep. Derp. Max Nichols. Good catch, Fuel Snable. Hey, hey, it passed. Nice. So that means that code works. Um, cool. Um, well, in that case... We can obviously just take this same pattern and apply it one level up to do the quarters. So, yeah. Uh, I think that basically works. Um, I don't like the way that we're doing this exactly, because this gets kind of ugly and nasty uh, going up those letters. But, um, I think I think that's the, like, we, we can see that it's going to work. So, that's kind of cool. Uh, yes, I had a lot to do at work and only fell into bed in the evening. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, did anyone, uh, did anyone actually make any progress on this? I didn't take a look. We didn't submit anything, neither did, neither did that one. Did this one submit anything? Ah, nice. Uh, make change, number of pennies, number of nickels, number of dimes, number of quarters. Nice. So this one's trying to maximize for large things. So this one's coming up with a good one, not just all the solutions. So whoever did this one, they basically said, "Hey, if we, you know, if if, if we can afford to put in quarters, add quarters. If we can afford to put in dimes, add dimes." Um, Totally works. You saw something worrisome in one of your metrics. Looking a bit for the hoses. Good luck, Fuel Snable. Hopefully, it's nothing bad. Yeah, because when you're doing this, I think it makes sense to do it this way. Like, originally I was thinking, yeah, you'd break out methods to do each of the different parts, like a method to add your quarters, a method to do your nick nickels, your dimes, your pennies, etc. But the challenge is I think it makes most sense to do it in this nested for loop kind of approach. And you sit there, you're like, nested for loop? It's like, well, that's how many options you're making. So nested for loop seems big, but the the end total number is exactly the same regardless. So if your number of operations you have to do is 10... Well, what's it matter whether those 10 choices were done in a for loop or done in sequence in some set? And it doesn't really. Uh, so the complexity is still the exact same every time because we are getting all the options. So it does, it does happen. It just looks worse because we're trained to see nested for loops and be scared by them. Huh. Yep, cool. Honk. Which, in case there's somebody in here who wants to take a look at the code I was just working on, I will do this. Oh, did I close it? I killed mine. Dang it. Well, I guess I'm not getting that back open. 
All right. Um. Do 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 do. Really? Hang on. There we go. Yeah, we'll do this. All right. So, first things first, I want to do this. I want to ask everybody to make sure that uh, if you haven't yet, be sure to hit the uh, follow button uh, to make sure that you're notified when we go live. Uh, I want to make sure I toss in links to our Discord, our GitHub, our YouTube site, and our Twitter over in the chat. Uh, so if you're interested in taking a look at any of our code or chatting with us, join our Discord, join our GitHub, uh, and you can actually interact pretty well with me and the other people here on the stream. And lastly, I am going to set up a raid because we are going to go visit someone else in a little bit, but I want to make sure that I talk to all of you before we do that. So I am going to roll my credits here on the stream. Uh, I want to make sure that I thank everybody that hung out today, the Michael Jolly, Adrian Hall, Carrie. Uh, all three of you were awesome with the cheering today. I want to thank our moderators for helping out. SNB, Lucky Number 7, Stool Penner, thank you for joining us today and uh, having fun with all of us. Uh, I want to thank all these lovely followers as well as these new people that are subscribers. Uh, the Michael Jolly, Robert Tables, who was gifted a sub from Kerry, and Adrian Hall, who returned back to uh, update that sub with us. And uh, everyone, we will be back on Saturday for some more streaming. Our stream actually starts at 1 p.m. my time on Saturday, so that's an hour later than it started today. But if you look at your clock right now, subtract two hours, probably that's when I will start on Saturday. Uh, so I am serious, though. If you do want to chat with us, join our Discord. It's the best place to, to chat with us outside of the stream. Uh, everybody, have a great rest of your week. I will see you on Saturday. Happy coding and take care.